anything in the world after the incredible hit Sex in the City. Why divorce? I have a, a, a small company that produces for HBO called Pretty Matches Productions, and I went to meet my partner, Allison Benson, and I said to her that I had been thinking very much about marriages and long-term relationships, and I suppose it was because I, I am in one myself, and I think that there is a very interesting point of reckoning that happens, um, which is not necessarily bad, but in fact, that look forward and often um, a glance back is necessary, and that there were so many people around me who who were also in long-term relationships, whether they were the traditional, mm -hmm. um, but they were committed, people who had really committed, and that there were so many stages and so many chapters and so many experiences as th that were happening. And I thought about all the people I had heard discuss, contemplate divorce, those who I had witnessed experience it and come out triumphant, mm -hmm. those who had experienced it and it had devastated them, mm -hmm. um, those who had considered affairs and the marriage survived the marriage mm -hmm. didn't survive it complicated it with because of children financial stress and I thought there's so many stories about those relationships mm -hmm. on television and and for the most part they're quite buoyant and happy and um, they sort of uh, they have a sort of cozy but there is another side to real mm -hmm. grown-up relationships, and they're painful and disappointing, and they involve failure mm -hmm. and smart people making mm -hmm. not smart choices. And I wanted to explore now, it. Now, I should say I've been lucky enough to see the first six episodes. So in addition to all of those kind of tragic and sad aspects, it's also very funny. Very funny. should add that. But it's clearly a very different character than the one you played on Sex and the City. And I... That, just to, to talk about that role for a second, it was so iconic. Do you feel sometimes that it's hard to escape it? It's like Carrie is like your Spock for Leonard Nimoy, you know? <laughs> that, no one that ever said that. <laughs> so funny. That's such a good and clever analogy. Well, just that, you know, of, people are, oh, well, yeah, you're no. so identified with that character, so. Um, no, I'm, I'm, um, incredibly comfortable with the association and the recognition that one might have if they see me walk down a street. And um, it's just simply not a burden. It's an enormous privilege, frankly. And, um, you know, I've been a working actor since I was eight years old. And um, I always wanted to play people that were different and interesting and very much unlike myself, and to have the opportunity to not just play a role, but live a life, a complete life, almost to the point where you are spending more time being that other person than in fact you are yourself, and to have it so beautifully told, and surrounded by people who you so uh, treasure the working mm -hmm. relationship on the streets of New York at a very specific time mm -hmm. and place in this world and country, um, it's, a, it's a gift, and I feel very confident that I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you about divorce had I not playing, played that part and had that home and found mm -hmm. that home at HBO. Um, so for me, it's this extraordinary moment, and now it's my job to find another really interesting, exciting, challenging, flawed, funny committed, mm -hmm. reliable, wreck of a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's, the, the character is Francis, right? Mm -hmm. We should set this a little bit. It takes place like on Hastings on Hus mm -hmm. Hudson, which is a suburb about a half hour from here. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the ways Francis is different. You will know within, I would say, the first 37 seconds, minute and a half, that this woman is not Carrie Bradshaw. And, but that's not why I did it. I did it because she is so human to me. She mm -hmm. is so real and is, um, she's so courageous and so exhausted <laughs> and so uh, smart and filled with a sort of terrifying inertia, right? The sense of inertia. 
but wants things like we all do, recognizes that there is a life still out there. What she says in the pilot is, I want to save my life while I still care about it. And for me, that is the mm -hmm. jumping off point of the whole show. Mm -hmm. So I just loved her. I was scared of her. She can be chilly and cold. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's interesting because some of the qualities of her character are, are not that likable. And it seems one of the challenges is that you're so damn likable. It's hard <laughs> to play a character. You don't love it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Like yeah. that. No, but that, you know, is that sometimes hard, actually, for you to play that kind of character and no. get that across? I, I like her. I think she's actually quite likable. And just because she isn't careful in distress, I think, in a way, I admire her more than I do likable people mm -hmm. who, who, who aren't truthful and candid and honest at the most difficult moments, and when it's required of you. And it doesn't mean that she's always honest, right. because she is duplicitous. Right. Um, but I think the more time you spend with her and you understand the past 17, 18 years of her life, I think the more human, even if you don't identify, I think you will see something in her that is actually quite remarkable. Your father was a poet and a journalist. Um, you're very interested in, in books. You're starting an imprint, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is very exciting. But were some of the stories like John Cheever or John Updike, as you were kind of create, you know, <laughs> creating this kind of suburban world that on the outside looks yeah. very lovely, and as you dig take off the layers, you kind of see it's more complicated. Was, did that inform your thinking? It certainly informed mine, among other things. I mean, mm -hmm. 70s cinema was a huge influence for me. But yes, Cheever, for me, I mean, I love, I don't know how many of you in the audience are fans of those stories, but yes, and in fact, when we first showed the pilot to uh, Richard Plepler, um, who's basically our, our boss, um, at HBO, he, uh, one of the first things he said, and he, we had never discussed it, was that it was, had reminded him of Cheever, and I was so fulfilled and um, <laughs> relieved and, and um, so happy that he could recognize it without any real acknowledgement, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we talked a little bit about the economic resonance that it has now, but I, I guess in this kind of campaign election season, everything is resonating okay. in, a, in a weird way. And um, I don't think, given the title divorce, I'm giving too much away by saying it, you know, in the opening uh, pilot, there is infidelity uh, that happens in affair. And um, who do you think had the affair? <laughs> Who? You. He did. All oh, hands for he. You. Okay. And hands for she. Ah, uh, many more. <laughs> <laughs> you are the star, after all. I mean, come on. But uh, I cannot say. My lawyer has advised me. <gasps> but it, just to talk about, though, you know, w one of the things I was thinking about, because it does come up later on in terms of, on a couple of different levels, but the double standard for men and for women, which you know, we're seeing kind of play out here now in the presidential race as Hillary Clinton is being uh, kind of called to account for her husband's indiscretions when he was in the presidential office, but yet Trump is, you know, has his own baggage, as everyone does. <laughs> But the double standard yes. for men and women, yes. is that something that you, know, you were thinking about again in this, how it plays I, out in the, sh in the characters in the I, show? I wasn't, I wasn't really, I mean, you know, now that we have to share this material with everybody, which is you know, very fraught, like you're very, it's scary, because you love this thing, and you've worked on it for a really long time, and you feel good, so you offer it up. And what's interesting is how many people have said to me, you know, are you afraid? You know, do you, are you scared? She's not likable. And I was, I'm so struck by that because I just don't know that somebody would ask a man 
that had, mm -hmm. if that was the course of events in, in his life as we're experiencing mm -hmm. it as an audience, you know. I always remind people that Tony Soprano was a murderer <laughs> and we had no problem loving him, you know, and if in fact, um, and I too loved him, and I am very against murder. Um, <laughs> Just for the record. <laughs> um, uh, and so if in fact Francis, after 17 or 18 years of marriage, you know, if there's been an indiscretion or a bad choice, that certainly doesn't, um, tell the whole story. So it's so interesting to me that there is a concern about her being likable for if in fact that's the reason. Um, because I don't think about that. I don't think that you can tell, I don't think we can worry about that. I think you have, we, we talked about this so much on Sex and the City, Michael Patrick and I. You have to tell the story you believe in. You know, when, when Carrie was about to have an affair with Big, anyone remember that? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Michael came to me among, I mean, we've had, we had endless conversations over the course of many years. And he was like, look, this is what I'm thinking and what do you feel? And I was like, wow, a absolutely, you know? And immediately like, oh, I don't know. People are gonna really not like Carrie. And I was like, but that's Carrie's choice. And mm -hmm. Carrie has to sort of deal with the consequences. This is a human being who is making a choice, who is, you know, maybe not a choice you would make or I would make, but that is what makes story interesting and real. And that, that is when story draws in mm -hmm. people because it's human.